In this video, let's continue to cover data types while creating this products table. In this video, we are going to be concerned about the weight column and the price column. So previously, we created these three columns. So in order to add more columns to this, there are different ways. The simplest way is to drop the table and recreate it. Since we haven't actually add any data into it, we can simply drop the table. So drop table products. And then I'm highlighting it and press on F5. So now the table is dropped. I should be able to recreate it again. So we have category, name, and description. Next one we will be dealing with is weight. So I'm going to say weight, that's the name. And then I specify the data type. Here, I want the weight to be in kilos. Most of the time, weight is not a whole number, right? So for example, beef can be 1.2 kilo. 1.3 therefore we cannot use a whole number and we can only use data types like float or real so we can choose one the difference between float and real is just that the range of number is different real data type is a single precision floating point and it uses four bytes of storage whereas the float data type is a double precision floating point that uses eight bytes of storage. Therefore, real data type stores a smaller range of number compared with the float data type. Both of them are storing numbers in approximate value. That means the data stored here is not accurate. But if you're not concerned about accuracy, for example, weight, I don't mind that I miss a few milligram, so I can use float. And if I highlight this and execute this create table statements again then the table is recreated so to enter the data i right click on the table and then click on edit top 200 rows now i can re-enter the data again this is going to be meat so mea and the name is beef and description just some random description and the weight i can give it let's say i have 323 kilogram 0.567 and when i click out of the row the data is stored here you can see that 0.567 is stored here accurately so accuracy is not a problem when we only have like two three decimal places when we have a lot of decimal places then accuracy is a problem it's just because the way that the data is stored in SQL Server for a float type or a real type is approximate value, right? So the rounding is, is not accurate. Therefore, it's not very good for storing financial, for example, uh, storing money when accuracy is very, very important. But if you're dealing with like scientific data, uh, astronomical data, for example, uh, the distance between planets, it doesn't really matter if you're off by a few millimeters. So in that case, we can use float or real, although it's not very accurate, it's very efficient. The performance of calculation storage is higher than other type of numbers. And what is the other type of number that I'm, I'm talking about? Let's move on to the next column, which is the price column, where we're storing money value. The name of the column is price. And I want to, instead of using float or real, I want to use decimal. Decimal number is accurate. And you have to specify two values, so A and B. What A stands for is the, the total number of digits that are allowed in this column. Let's say totally I need uh, 18 digits, but, but within the 18 digits, I only want two decimal places. So therefore, for example, um, if I have a dollar amount, 3,567,123.56. So this can be stored in the decimal because the total digits is less than 18 digits and we have two digits as decimal places. Let's try to create this table. Again, let's drop the table first. So highlight this and click on the execute. By the way, this becomes green because I used dash dash to comment it out. So this becomes a comment. 
when this becomes a comment, I cannot execute it anymore. So if I highlight the whole thing, I cannot execute it. It still says comments completed successfully, but there's just nothing is executed. This is just a comment, right? So for example, I execute this create table statement. Now the table is created. If I highlight this again and click on this, it says commands completed successfully, but the table is not actually dropped because we are not actually executing the actual drop table statement. If you want to execute the drop table st statement, just highlight the statement. Although this is in common, I can still execute it like this. Now, why do I comment out the drop table statement here? Because SQL statements like drop or delete, they are very dangerous. So I want to comment them out in case that I forgot to highlight the statement that I want to execute. And I just press on F5 accidentally, the drop table statement will not be executed. Right? So this is very, very important when you are debugging live database, production database, for example. So I always comment out dangerous statement like drop database, drop table, delete from table, which you're going to learn later. Okay, so now let's go to the table, right click on it and edit top 200 rows again. I have this again, I'm entering MEA and beef and uh, the description is triple A beef. Uh, weight is, I don't know, 560 kilogram, 0.34 and price. I'm going to copy this over. Uh, instead of 56, let's say 5678. And then I'm going to copy this over to the price column. And when I click out, you can see that it says, you know, this row was successfully committed to the database, but it's not actually um, pulling data because it's, it did a rounding. That's why it has this problem. What we can do is we can close it and then we can try to edit top 200 rows again. Now let's take a look at this. It did a rounding for us automatically. So we entered five, six, seven, eight. And because we specified the data to have only two decimal places. So therefore it run it to five, seven instead of five, six. Therefore you can see that decimal data type is very accurate. If you have a price column that need to store money or any number that needs accuracy, uh, decimal is recommended. Float and real data type is not recommended. But keep in mind that decimal has a slower performance comparing with float and real. So it really depends on the requirement of your project. Also in SQL Server, there is a money data type. I actually don't recommend you to use money data type. Sometimes the money data type also have running problems, ironically. I personally prefer the decimal data type for something like price, right, which needs accuracy. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. I will see you in the next one.